What's up guys and welcome to a new LS Dyna tutorial. In this video we are going to do the blast with ALE method and the blast will be on a composite concrete beam as you can see. So let's close this one and start our pre-post. So here I have my pre-post. First I want to mesh the concrete composite beam. I go to mesh and then shape measure then box solid the length of this one let's say gonna be two meters and in y it will be 200 and in z it will be 400 and then i control the size i make it 20 20 20. so here i click on isometric so here i see the size is quite okay so i click on accept right so here I click on front view and then what I'm going to do now I'm going to go to element tools move copy and here put number two a new part ID and here I say I beam and then I highlight on the elements that I want to convert them to the I beam then click on apply and then accept as you can see here I have only half of the composite beam because in this tutorial I will only do half of the problem if you want to make the full I beam then you can go to here transform and then reflect reflect normal to Y and then click by part and the origin is anywhere on this surface copy elements and then reflect and then here you go you have your composite concrete beam but as I said, I want to do only half of the beam and then apply the symmetry boundary condition. So I reject here and then done. Now I want to make the domain of the ALE, meaning I want to make the mesh of the TNT explosives and the mesh of the air. So I go to mesh again, shape measure, and then let's say this one will be 104, 0 and this one let's say will be 300 and then this one it will be 1000 the elements i can make them bigger maybe 40 this is also 40 then if i create you see i have half of it it's okay it's fine then i click on accept so as you can see here i made only half of the air domain and i will reflect it later to make the full domain and you will see later why i'm using this method Okay, so I go to element tools, move copy, and here I put number four, which is a new part ID, and this one will be TNT. And then I go to here, click one, two, three, four. I think here is three and here is four. And then apply, then accept. Now I click on F2. I hide everything. I only show this guy. Now go to element tools, uh, transform, reflect, normal to X and then click by part this one and this one then the origin is anywhere on this surface copy the elements and then reflect and then accept now one more thing to do is duplicate nodes and then merge duplicate nodes and then accept now the green one will be the air and the yellow one is the initial explosive shape so now i click on f2 i show everything now you can see they are overlapping right now i want to move this guy to the center here so i go like that and then i measure this one this point in x is this one okay so what i can do here i go to element tools and then transform translate in the x direction then by part then minus here 20 and then positive another one okay now it's nice and in the center except okay now we are almost done with the mesh okay so as i said again I, I will simulate only half of the problem but before i finish the meshing i have only one more thing to do which is to separate the i beam from the concrete now because of the method that i made this composite beam they will be in what we call it perfect bonding meaning they will be fixed and glued together with a very strong glue and they will not be detached from one another so what i'm going to do now is actually to detach them from each other so i go to element tools and then transform and let's say i transform in z here i put 500 
click on this part and then I need to click on copy elements but I will not click on it first because I want to demonstrate what I just said before about the perfect bonding so if I move this up you can see things are going crazy some of the elements of the concrete are being pulled I don't want that so I reject then I copy elements then I move up then accept then next I will delete the lower one then move this upper one down here so I go to element edit and then delete and then by part like this but I don't want this one so I go to by elements and then I deselect or remove by area and then delete okay now they are free to move and they're not fixed together so I go here again by part add click on this one untick on this one and then move down then set all right so now click on f2 show everything now our mesh is complete okay so now i want to apply the boundary conditions first i want things to be symmetric so boundary spc and then create so the symmetry will be along the xz plane so the elements will not be able to move in the y direction so it, it cannot go in penetrate this plane and then it will be able to rotate around y and cannot rotate around z and x okay because this is my symmetry plane so the elements can rot can rotate around x sorry the elements cannot rotate around x because if they rotate they will go inside or outside of the plane same goes with the rotation around z but they will be able to rotate around y because they are free to move a lot uh, on the surface of the symmetry plane so by elements propagate okay that's done and then don't forget to click here and also here then apply okay so that's done with the symmetry boundary condition i hide this one I want to fix my beam so again I go here create by elements propagate and I fix everything click here also and then click this one and click this one then apply okay show and then hide okay now we go to the keyword first we have the parts I will just rename them this one is the red one which is the concrete except I beam is I beam this green one number three is the air domain or just air and then accept TNT is TNT now I go to section I have only two type of sections here both of them are solid so first new this one is solid the grunge Except then new ID, I will just make it three. This one solid LE multi material. This is number 11. It's always good to double check. Done now. We go to material. So here I go to material. So first is the concrete. So for the concrete, I will use this material number 72. In my previous video about concrete, I used material number 84 and 159, but here I will try and use this one. So I double click here and then new ID, and then here concrete. This is 2.8 E minus 6, 0.2. This is the tensile, the tensile strength, and it'll be 0 0.0014. This is in gigapascal, and this is the compressive strength, and it will be minus because it's compression. 0.032 and uh, the rest I leave it blank here this one I make it 39 okay 0 0.03937 because I'm using millimeters and this one will be 145000 because I'm using gigapascal and this one will be 50 okay and then accept and with these properties I got very good results for the compression test of a cylinder but if we have different type of loads then we might need to define all these things so accept done 
Now I move up here. I go to add erosion. Then here I click on concrete. In one of my previous videos, I used this material already. And at that time, I was using the old pre-post. But here I'm using a newer pre-post version. And as you can see here, you can put all of these zero. So we just ignore all the other criteria that's not important to you. You just define what you want. And here I want to define the maximum principal strain. It will be 0 0.1. So when the principal strain reaches 0 0.1, then the elements of the concrete will be eroded or it will be deleted. And then accept and then done. That's for the concrete. Now we go to the steel. So for the steel, I'm defining number 15, Johnson Cook. So here, new, and here I will have stainless steel. So I put the material, properties, 7.896, E minus 6, here 77, then 193, and this is 0.33. And here, viscoplastic is 1. This is the coefficients of the Johnson Cook model, 0.35. This is in the unit of stress, 0 0.275, and this one, 0 0.36, 0 0.022. This M is 1, this room temperature, or the melting temperature, 1763. Room temperature is 293, and then here is 1. CP, 4400, and then this PC is minus 1000. Here I put 1. And then here also I put one and then accept. That's done for the steel. Now to define the material properties of the air. So I use null material model and I click on new and then here is air. The density 1.293 E minus 9. This PC is minus 1 E power of 5. Accept. And now for the explosive, this one 008. New, then let's say TNT. This is the density, 1.63 E minus 6. This detonation velocity is 7840. This pressure is 26 gigapascal. And the rest are zero. And then accept. Okay, now we're done with the material. Now we need to define the equation of states. Equation of states. For the concrete, we don't need because we are using that material 7.2 with reduced material properties. But if I define all the other parameters, then I would need the equation of state for this material model, material model 0.72. But for the steel, I need because I use Johnson Cook. Previously, I've used the Johnson Cook material model for steel, but I used the linear polynomial equation of state. But here in this example, I will use this Gornesian equation of state for steel. So I click on this one and then I click on number two. Then I say EO, EOS for stainless steel. So C will be 5470. This is 1.4900 0, 0, gamma 0, 0 0.34 and this one A 0.46. Then here 0 and here also 0. Okay, everything is okay. And then accept. And next for the air. For the air, this is the equation of state, linear polynomial. So here I click on new, which is 3, because the air ID is 3. So this is air equation of state. And then here I just need a few things, which is C3 and C4. Sorry, C4 and C5. And this E0 is 2.55 E minus 6. And here V0 is 1. And then accept. Now, last but not least, this JWL, which stands for Jones Wilkins Lee Equation of State. So here I click on new, 4 is okay. Equation of State for TNT. And here I have A will be 373.79. This is 3.74, 4.5. 0 0.9, 0 0.35, this is 0 0.25, E minus 3, and this is 1. And then accept. Done. Okay, so now I have defined everything. One more thing that I need to define, which is the hourglass. So here, control hourglass, new hourglass, this is hourglass 
for Lagrange and let's say it's number three and this is one should be okay then add new this is number one this is one e minus six the coefficient and here i just put number three and it's and then this is a ale hourglass set okay now i assign these guys to the their respective parts so first i have the concrete this is lagrange and here is concrete equation of state i don't have any and then our glass for lagrange set i beam this is lagrange this is stainless steel with johnson cook equation of state is equation of state for stainless steel our glass is number one for the air here i have section number three material number three equation of state number three our glass number three set for the tnt here i have Number three, section ID, material ID is four, hourglass is four, and uh, sorry, equation of state is four, and hourglass is three. Set. Done. Next, I want to define the interaction between the ALE and the Lagrange, or what we call the coupling. So I go up here, then constraint, then Lagrange in solid. New ID, and here LE and Lagrange coupling. Okay, they are part set, but I did not define the part set yet. It's okay, and just click here. The slave will be the part set that contains all the Lagrange parts. So here, new keyword, and then part list, new. Yeah, I would say Lagrange part set. I have part number one and part number two. Then insert, accept. Then same goes here, new keyword, and then new part list, new ID, and then this one will be LE part set. So instead of 2, 3, it will be 3 and 4. Then I click on replace here and then accept. Okay, this is 0, 0, 0. This one is important to make it number 5 because allowing erosion in the Lagrangian entities. Because you have the concrete, the concrete is, is, is expected to fail. So we want the coupling to be also with the inside elements of the concrete. That's why we are making number five. If we make it number four instead, then the blast wave will come and then it will delete the first layer of the concrete and then it will not know the second layer. It will not recognize it. It will straight away go to the I-beam. Couple type, couple with the highest density. And this is all default here. I just make this one number one. Okay, the leakage control and then accept and then done. Okay, what else? First, I want to know what is the location of this point. This point. So this point is zero zero one thousand. Exactly zero zero one thousand. And this is why, if you remember, I made half of the model first, then I reflect it this way because I want this one to be exactly in the middle. So I want to define this point as the origin of the blast. So I go to initial detonation. Where is that part here? Initial detonation. And then part ID is a TNT, of course. Here is 1000. Here is the lighting time. If you want to delay the ignition, you can control this one. Then accept. Okay, I click this one here and cross this one. I just want to remove this clear now you see initial detonation will be here and if you click on it you have this one you can see this this plus sign here tells you where is the origin of the detonation and this part id part id number four tells you which part is the detonation part okay so now it's almost complete we just need to define the usual stuff so i go to all and then i go to control then termination I just put 10 milliseconds, accept, and then time step. And this one I need to reduce it because we have explosives. So the velocity will be very high. Accept, done. One more thing up here, control, ALE. Okay, here I put minus 1, 0. Here is minus 2. Here is minus 1. Then accept. To know more about this, I put a link to one of the reading materials in my first LE tutorial. Okay, now next. I define the output database D3 plot. So here, binary D3 plot. Here I put 0 0.1, then accept, and done. 
and what else I need one more thing here which is LE so I need to make LE multi-material this multi-material group here and then this is part and this is air call it air accept new then here for then I put TNT and then accept then done then control S and we save this guy Concrete blast concrete blast and then here tutorial here is tutorial blast and save and then save okay let me check do we have anything else I think that's all what we need so let's say go to model check do we have errors or not okay so we don't have any errors but actually from here I can see that I forgot something which is the interaction between the concrete and the I-beam we have separated them so they are not uh, merged together so they don't know actually each other right now so we need to define the contact between both of them so here I go to model then go to keyword and then collapse all then I go to contact here the usual surface to surface will work fine so I go to new here concrete and I beam so this both of them are parked so the slave is the concrete and this one is the beam and I will just put high coefficient of friction and then accept and then done so here I'm using just surface to surface if you want them to be tied together you can use tied node to surface meaning it will be in perfect bonding and you can use tie break if you know the bonding strength between the concrete and the I-beam so now control S and I save again I can copy here and I open this one open here and then I browse and paste this guy so here I put maximum CPU and then maximum memory and now I just need to wait okay 22 minutes is an okay time to wait and the first estimation are not always very accurate so control C S W 2 you can see it will take only 10 minutes okay good you can see that the blast is moving and it's hitting the concrete and you can see the elements of the concretes are being deleted here I put a big D3 plot because I just want to check whether things are working fine or not okay so let's now stop this one we don't need to wait and see how the things are going so here I open the D3 plot then I click on F2 just want to see the concrete and the I-beam and the LE parts and the LE group I just want to see the explosives then I click on this one here now everything will show up now we see okay, things are working fine we can make it a bit slow maybe so you can see the blast is hitting the concrete and the concrete is being deleted okay so you can see here the domain of the air is limited you don't actually need to model very big domain of air I click here and then I go to part color and then make this guy transparent yeah, I just hide the mesh so because we make the air domain only this size that's why the explosive won't go any farther it will just be within this domain but here I've run the simulation with a finer mesh and a bigger air domain and you can see here how the blast wave is propagating and if you want to see the front view I think this is the front view or the side view whatever you want to call it so this is the front view and lastly I want to show how is the damage in the concrete you can see here we have some separation this is the tension failure here I make the blast wave transparent and then I show the damage in the concrete and looks very nice you can see how the blast wave is damaging the concrete and if you focus here you will see some damage in 45 degrees which is due to the shear okay guys I think that's enough for this tutorial thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time bye bye